On the 1st of July, NASA detected a mysterious object speeding toward Earth, and some actual bona fide experts think it might not be your typical space rock or maybe any kind of rock. This one is quite unusual. It's relatively bright, meaning that it has, if it's a solid object, has a diameter of 20 kilometers. That's bigger than Manhattan Island. And uh, there isn't enough material in rocks in interstellar space to give us such a giant rock once per decade. That's the duration of the survey of the sky. And so the question is, what is it? Now, people argue that it must be a comet, uh, but for a comet, you usually see a cometary tail trailing behind it. In this case, the deepest image that we had with the Hubble Space Telescope revealed that it has glow in front of it, not behind it. And then the trajectory of this object is extremely unusual, fine-tuned. It lies in the plane of the orbits of the planets around the sun to within five degrees. The chance for that happening at random is one in 500. And then it comes at a very special time when it passes close to Mars, Venus, and Jupiter. The chance of that happening for, for, for this object to pass so close to these as they move around the sun is one in 20,000. NASA confirmed an interstellar visitor unlike anything before. And then the data trail went silent. FOIAs came back with blacked out pages. Researchers were suddenly reassigned. That isn't how science usually works. What did they see in the Webb telescope readings? Stable thermal signatures, unusual rotations, hints of engineered materials that scared them into secrecy? And the most haunting question, did 3i Atlas leave behind a final message before it slipped past the sun? Before we move on, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like the video. How can something as small as an asteroid shine like polished steel and move faster than any comet ever recorded? That was the puzzle scientists faced with 3i Atlas, an object first revealed in late June. At first glance, it seemed like just another faint dot picked up by survey telescopes. Yet the more closely it was tracked, the clearer it became that ATLAS was no ordinary visitor. Its path wasn't looping around our sun like a comet born here. Its motion showed it came from outside, racing in on an interstellar trajectory at speeds natural bodies in our system rarely reach. That outsider status alone would have made it remarkable. But then came the stranger part, the way it reflected sunlight. Brightness is a tricky property in astronomy because reflectivity varies with composition. Ice gives a soft glow, stone yields a more muted return, and metals tend to glint. Atlas didn't return light the way a ball of frozen gas should. Instead, it gleamed in a way closer to something manufactured. Its size was modest, smaller than many near-Earth asteroids, but the light curve suggested a surface area that seemed far too reflective for its dimensions. Picture something the length of a bus shining like a tower made entirely of windows catching the sunset. For many, that combination set off questions not just about what it was made of, but how such reflectivity was maintained as it spun through space. If you've followed these rare interstellar guests before, you'd know the first one confirmed was Oumuamua in 2017. That elongated object behaved oddly too. It changed velocity in subtle ways without a visible tail. A couple of years later, another traveler named Borisov appeared with a much clearer comet-like profile, spraying gas and dust as expected. Atlas borrowed the strangest elements of both. It lacked the wide, dusty trails that Borisov carried. Yet like Oumuamua, its motion hinted at forces that could not be explained by gravity alone. Add to that its unusual glimmer and consistent brightness, and suddenly, you you have a hybrid unlike either of its predecessors. Astronomers using the Webb telescope notice details that deepen the mystery. When natural rock or ice rotates, brightness usually flickers unevenly. In Atlas, the spinning appeared too smooth, as if the axis were perfectly balanced. Each reflection returned at steady intervals, suggesting symmetry not common in craggy, tumbling objects. 
It was as though the body had flat exterior panels, or swaths of mirror-like material structured around it. Nature generates symmetry, but rarely in consistent, broad geometric spans, especially in something so small and fast-moving. That pattern made observers wonder if its surface was engineered instead of accidental. Another strange detail came from the way carbon signatures were detected in places that didn't line up with expected exposure. Instead of an irregular mix of materials you'd expect to see on a thawing comet, the web instruments read patches, hinting at uniform compounds. Some analysts suggested this could mean artificial layering, a kind of purposeful coding instead of geological randomness. And when teams modeled the mass compared to the way it accelerated, inconsistencies showed up. It seemed lighter than it should have been if it were solid throughout. That left open the possibility that ATLAS was hollow, or at least less dense than stone or ice. A hollow interior could be accidental, but in engineering, hollowness is often a feature used for travel. Put all of this together, the outward glow, the symmetrical spin, the unusual surface markers, and the density mismatch, and the view takes shape. What we're watching doesn't behave like a natural chunk wandering from one star to another. The first key lesson from ATLAS is the impression of deliberate design. It looked almost chosen to be seen, shining brightly enough, structured neatly enough, and balanced precisely enough to draw attention across millions of miles. Which raises a question you cannot avoid. If it was meant to be noticed, why are the very agencies that study space refusing to discuss it openly? Discoveries of this scale usually light up the news cycle. When Oumuamua appeared, press conferences followed within hours. When Borisov was detected, tracking updates poured out almost daily. Scientists were encouraged to publish preliminary results, even when the data was incomplete. That openness framed both objects as scientific gifts, chances for humanity to learn in the clear light of day. But when Atlas streaked into view, something very different happened. There was an initial announcement. Yes, another interstellar object had been spotted. But then, almost immediately, the flow of information slowed to a trickle. No ramped up mission pages, no constant updates, no excitement radiating out from space agencies. Instead, it became strangely quiet. At first, the silence seemed like a coincidence. Large organizations sometimes move slowly, and perhaps Atlas didn't inspire the same public spark as Oumuamua, but observers noticed details that didn't match ordinary caution. The live data portals tracking the object began experiencing maintenance periods that cut off access for days at a time. Observatories that had previously shared light curves openly did so only sporadically, and some stopped updating their plots altogether. An official explanation never appeared, only vague notes that further information would be available after review. For anyone following closely, this looked less like delay and more like something locked behind a fence. The signs of restriction grew harder to ignore. Requests under open records laws produced stacks of heavily redacted documents. Entire pages blackened, except for meaningless fragments of headers and footnotes. More curiously, people working inside observational teams began being reassigned. Routine collaborations suddenly shifted, with key scientists disappearing into what was called internal review mode. The convenient phrase popped up so often, it almost sounded rehearsed, like a standard line meant to explain without truly explaining. That isn't normal. Borisov's trajectory was public. Its outgassing plotted almost hourly. Oumuamua's wobble and acceleration were recorded in raw graphs for anyone with a spreadsheet. With Atlas, the story froze before it had even begun. One astronomer described how analysis of raw readings was cut off mid-study, with outside collaborators told the data could not leave internal servers until clearance returned. No such clearance arrived. Instead, researchers were encouraged to rely on already processed numbers rather than the unfiltered observations that reveal the deeper patterns. That process might seem normal in classified military programs, but in astronomy it sticks out like a beacon. Science thrives on transparency. To suddenly wall off what should be open undermines the very foundation of the field. So the natural question rises, why? Is this silence because experts lack answers and prefer not to speculate? Or is it because some answers already exist, but sharing them publicly would unleash consequences too disruptive to manage.
In the absence of clarity, conversation outside the agencies filled the void. Online forums and independent researchers debated whether ATLAS was a probe deliberately constructed to shimmer in our telescopes. Others wondered if it carried a stored signal, like a test transmission waiting for us to interpret. A few even suggested it was a relay craft, a fragment of something larger. None of these ideas had confirmation, but the lack of official insight made them flourish. When a vacuum opens, theories rush in. The result was profound suspicion. Suspicion, not just over what Atlas was, but over why the organizations tasked with studying it chose opacity this time. If secrecy were just delay, why push out documents with so many black bars? If nothing unusual was found, why divert teams and declare raw data off limits? The behavior suggested something beyond scientific anomaly, something that might enter the realm of strategy and national interest. A rock or icy body floating past hardly triggers global coordination, but an engineered-looking visitor might. That alone changed the atmosphere surrounding ATLAS. What truly sets this object apart is not only its strange reflective glow or the balanced way it spun in space. It is the coordinated choice to withhold, the deliberate pause in communication, the inversion of the scientific script. Atlas became not only a puzzle of physics, but a case study in silence. And when silence replaces disclosure, it demands attention in its own right. Which leaves the lurking question, what detail hidden inside the restricted data could possibly justify closing the doors? Was Atlas really drifting aimlessly, or did it leave us something meant to be noticed before it escaped into the dark? That's the question hanging over the final stage of its journey. Most comets or asteroids follow the gravitational rules we expect, curving, slowing, and speeding as physics dictates. This one behaved differently. Observers recorded slight but consistent non-gravitational acceleration, small nudges that couldn't be tied to jets of vapor or out gassing. On top of that, instruments caught a faint thermal signature. It wasn't random heat bleeding into space, but a measured warmth that held steady in ways no icy fragment should. When the Webb telescope focused on it, the surprise deepened. Instead of seeing scattered energy like the fuzzy glow of dust trails, its detectors found a structured infrared signal. The lines of light weren't chaotic. They pulsed with a rhythm, not perfectly timed like a beacon, but too organized to be brushed off as chance. Imagine pointing a radio at static and suddenly hearing repeated notes that stay locked in place. Researchers compared it to a calibration check, a pattern you would use to test if your equipment was functioning. Except now, that pattern seemed to be coming from the visitor itself. Suddenly, it seemed less like background noise, and more like a signal with intent. The trajectory only amplified that suspicion. As Atlas crossed the inner system, its path wove close to major planets, brushing by Venus, Mars, and Jupiter in an order almost too clean to ignore. In celestial mechanics, objects fall where gravity pulls them. Yet its course looked like choreography, each pass aligning at distances narrow enough that people began to question coincidence. Was this simply orbital luck? Or had the object been nudged to trace a route designed to catch our eyes as it moved through different vantage points across the solar system? To some, it looked like stepping stones set to draw attention at every stage. This is where the debate heated up. One of the louder voices in the discussion raised the idea of artificial propulsion and deliberate design. Instead of assuming the object was a frozen relic from another star, he framed it as worth considering whether it could be something engineered, perhaps thin structures harvesting the push of starlight, or an internal mechanism guiding its course. Past visitors like Oumuamua had already opened that door of speculation with unexplained accelerations. Atlas reopened it, adding a clearer layer by combining brightness, symmetry, and now the possibility of patterned output. So was its route a mere byproduct of motion, or a pre-mapped journey aimed at maximizing visibility? That question mattered because if trajectories can be chosen, Chosen, they can also be messages. A silent arc across the system becomes more than random travel. It becomes a performance, and performances are meant to be observed. Adding to this puzzle was the possibility that the infrared pattern wasn't trying to speak in 
language at all. It may not have been about contact. It may have been about calibration from the other side, testing how sharp our eyes are, measuring whether we could distinguish steady signals from noise, and watching if humanity noticed the difference. In that sense, the object wasn't calling us. It was studying our reaction. Atlas has shifted the question entirely. It is no longer just about what this object is made of or how it moves. The deeper question is who might be responsible for sending it and why it was designed to be so visible. That thought changes how we see the silence. Maybe it isn't hesitation, but control. You should think critically about why agencies restrict what once flowed freely and watch how new web data is released. If this was only a test, we are left wondering, what would the real broadcast look like when it finally arrives?